We put, a, we put up a post on my blog uh, a few days ago. Uh, this is something that um, my partner Lydia and I cooked up together. In fact, she, she's the one who actually did most of the writing for, the, uh, for this particular post. And uh, I'll, just, I'll just read it for you because it, it says it pretty well. Uh, the, the title of the uh, post is, You Were Here, asterisk. I'm often asked whether my workshops or trainings qualify for continuing education credit with the Yoga Alliance, International Association of Yoga Therapists, or other registries and or accrediting bodies. I always tell event attendees that they can put whatever they like in front of me and I'll happily sign it. Notwithstanding the fact that my less than favorable views on certification and licensing are well documented. And you've all heard me in this room. Uh, give you my view on those things. Uh, to simplify, simplify this process in the future, I've decided to provide free to the public as a downloadable PDF an official looking certificate of attendance. <laughs> Please feel free to print one and bring it with you to the next event with me and I will autograph it. Please note the fine print referenced by the prominent asterisk. Here's the certificate. When you click on it, it takes you to the PDF. OK. And there's the fine print. I'll read it for you. Well, first of all, certificate of attendance. This certifies that your name here was at name of event with Leslie Cameron. Here's a place for the date. There's a place for me to autograph it. And here's the fine print. <clears throat> This certifies that the person named above showed up for some, most, all of the indicated session and appeared to be awake. <laughs> Although there's no way for me to know whether they were listening or whether they absorbed, understood what I said, let alone how effectively they will choose to communicate it. <laughs> Additionally, there is no way for me to determine the teaching quality or the teaching ability or qualities of the person named above, regardless of how much I may have liked, tolerated, <laughs> him, her. The recipient of this document bears full responsibility for demonstrating to the public the quality and efficacy of their skills and communicating honestly the true extent of their training. That's the most important part. Now this is an honest piece of paper, as far as I'm concerned. Okay, this, thank you. This, this is something that I have absolutely no reservations about signing, because it's, it's absolutely true. Now, let me be clear, this is different than the certificate we issue to people that have graduated from the online training, and it's different from the letter of completion we give to people that have gone through the live trainings we do here at, at The Breathing Project, because these are things that happen um, over a period of time, during which time there is ample uh, opportunity to interact with people as individuals, uh, and to field questions, and to you know, get to know each other, and um, really get a sense of what's going on. Plus, there are requirements like homework and you know things like that. You know, for the online course, for example, um, you need to you need to get through Ron, who's tough. Ron is our homework guru. He's also my philosophy teacher. He, you know, he's tough, kind, but tough. You know. And uh, you have to complete all of those homework assignments for each of the lessons to uh, receive one of these certificates of completion. This is for, you know, when I show up for a weekend workshop somewhere, like I've just been doing this past weekend and like I do on many weekends of my life, I, I show up, I, I, I have a very nice experience usually with the people in the room and we, you know, enjoy each other and they laugh at my jokes and, you know, they ask questions and we have interactions and all of that. But, you know, it's 
what is it? It's uh, 12 hours, maybe 18 hours over the course of a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You know, I stay in town just long enough to create an enormous amount of confusion, and then I leave. You know, and people, you know, for whatever reason, they want to be able to credit the hours they spend with me confusing them towards some sort of whatever, you know, continuing education, credit, CEUs, whatever it is. And, you know, it doesn't have to be Yoga Alliance or IUIT. Sometimes they're, you know, involved in other professional organizations that have these requirements to, you know, do a certain number of hours every year to maintain your, your credential. And as I say, I really mean it. I, you know, I don't care. If you have a piece of paper for me to sign, I'll sign it. Uh, and it's not like I don't value my own signature uh, enough to be discerning about what I put it on. It's just that I value this idea of accumulating hours as proof of qualification so little that it's like, oh, okay, that's what you need to show to the bureaucrats. You need someone to sign it. Fine. There it is. You know. But a paper like this, uh, and it's funny and it's kind of jokey and all of that, and, and people are giving me lots of LOLs on Facebook over it, and which is nice, but at its root, the main thing here is the last sentence. The recipient of this document bears full responsibility for demonstrating to the public the quality and efficacy of their skills and communicating honestly the true extent of their training. That's not my responsibility. It's the responsibility of the person taking whatever knowledge they've accumulated or whatever studies they've done and, and offering it to the public. And in no way should a piece of paper like this serve to circumvent that reality or short circuit any inquiry on the part of a potential student or employer about what the true nature of this person's skill set really is. No piece of paper should uh, make someone not ask those questions or not establish that relationship. And everything else on here on the disclaimer is just saying, hey, you know, sure, they were there and they did their best not to fall asleep. Great, you know, kudos to them. But, you know, my responsibility ends with being as clear and accessible uh, and related as I possibly can be in doing my job. Whatever goes in on their end and comes out of their mouth at some future point, I, you know, that's their responsibility. That's, that, that is up to their sense of responsibility. And I'm always telling people pretty much toward the end of these weekends, you know, please try to avoid getting into what I call uh, the day after the yoga journal conference syndrome, where I suspect that in the days following things like the yoga journal conference, there's a lot of really crappy yoga classes getting taught out there in the world. <laughs> Some of you may relate to this. I don't know. But you go to these, like, it's like you go to this huge buffet or smorgasbord or something, and it's like, oh, that looks good. Ooh, that's delicious. You ever do that at a real smorgasbord and end up with indigestion? Or just so much crap on your plate before you got to the stuff that you really wanted that now what do you do with the stuff you've already put on your plate because it's full, you know, and there's no room for dessert? See, I always walk the line first before I even have a tray or a plate. I want to see what's out there. I want to, you know, Get, get a sense of everything that's being offered. And then I pick it up and then I, you know, I might skip a few things here and then go to the stuff that I saw. But if you just start filling your plate from the, when, the minute you hit that line, by the time you get to the middle of the line, you've got a full plate. Many of the things don't even go with each other. And then there's no room for the, some stuff that may be better further down the line. Okay, that's enough with the food analogy. Actually, no, it's not enough of the food analogy. Because let's just say, forget the smorgasbord. Let's just say I've had the greatest meal of my life. I have, just, I have just been prepared the greatest meal of my life. And it's just the most amazing experience. It's shown me what the possibility of food could really be. I can't believe I've been eating my whole life and I haven't had an experience this good. This is what food is really. Has anyone had, ever had a meal like that? And if you're a caring, kind, related person, wouldn't you want 
the people in your life who you care about to have just as good an experience eating? So yeah, what do you do? You go home after having that meal and you say, hey, I just had the greatest meal of my life. And you grab a plate and you go, here it is. Why don't you try it? <laughs> Was it, oh, you didn't see that coming? Was that a bit of a shit? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's the day after the Yoga Journal conference. You're just regurgitating everything from this. And maybe it was the greatest meal of your life. Maybe it wasn't some mishmashy smorgasbord of stuff that doesn't go with each other. Maybe it was fantastic and transformative. Great, but that's not how you share it. That's called regurgitating. We're not baby birds. We don't get fed that way. What you have to do is digest it. You see, because number one, if you're able to regurgitate it, you haven't digested it, right? It's here where it can come back out. It has to get past that. It has to get into your intestines. You know, and the stuff you don't need is shit. Get rid of it. <laughs> and let the stuff that you have absorbed become part of you, become part of your cells. Embody it. And then, if it's a meal, learn how to cook your own damn meal. You know, be a bit of a chef. And start preparing that for the people that you want to feed. Okay, is that about as far as I can take the food analogy? Or is there, <laughs> have I left anything out? <laughs> So I hope I get the point across, and um, I honestly mean it. It would make me so happy to sign one of these. It would make me happy to be signing it for a person that would be happy to have my signature on it, because it's an honest credential.